Good morning. It's uh, Friday morning. I'm going to talk about the next week or even two weeks in the weather pattern because we have a very interesting period coming up. And I think this will really tell the tale on how the rest of the winter is going to, come, is going to uh, unfold. So uh, it's definitely time to start watching certain things. And let's take a look real quick. So uh, some colder airs now in the area. Uh, that's due to a front that came through. We obviously had the storm system that brought all that rain. Now it's chilly through the weekend. When I say chilly, temperatures in the upper 40s for most areas. Um, as we get to uh, Monday, we're going to have this very weak wave come through uh, Monday morning. Might see a few snow flurries in the region, actually. So keep an eye on that, but nothing too serious. We then have this other storm that's going to develop uh, early next week, say Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. Uh, and there is going to be high pressure ahead of it. Uh, but I do not expect any widespread snow events for anywhere near the big cities. But on the interior, uh, several inches of snow could absolutely fall, especially up in the higher elevations uh, of New England. You can see the GFS model does a pretty good job of showing that here, where you know we might get some quick snow in northwestern Jersey, turning in some uh, rain. But we'll have to watch that closely there. But then up into um, New England, uh, you could see uh, it wants to snow. And I do expect, like I said, several inches of snow. Then the fun starts, guys, because on the tail of this is we have some true, and I mean true Arctic air. This is one of the more impressive Arctic air outbreaks we've seen, um, you know, probably since two years ago, actually. So taking a look here, I want to show you the source of this air. So this is as we get to next week. All this very, very cold air uh, over the pole and over Alaska is going to filter into the United States by the middle of next week. And watch this come in, guys. These are temperature anomalies at 5,000 feet. And this is going to be frigid. I mean, this is sub-zero for many of the areas up here. And as we get our way into um, the end of next week and the weekend, we have all that air filtering in to the United States. Now, the interesting thing is, because again, I, I showed this image the other day of what the seasonal models were showing for December, which would be a disaster in terms of winter weather levels, lovers. But the models are starting to change their tune and not really backing this up. So that's why I say this is a critical period. For example, Look at this pattern here with all this cold air filtering in from Canada, a little bit of warm air uh, in, in uh, you know, the southern area of the west coast. And then you take a look at you know, my winter analogs for surface temperature anomalies. And that's kind of the right look. That's kind of what I was expecting when you go from this to this. So um, I think we have to rely on what the analog showed. When I say analogs, what did past year show? And then we have to rely on what the models are showing. You can see if we look at the trend on this, the models have been very consistent over the last couple days. I mean, this is I'm showing you a couple days trends of the GFS, and this is just showing consistency in this legitimate Arctic air outbreak for the end of next week. So what does that mean? Temperatures in the 30s for most areas, guys. At night, lows in the uh, low, mid to lower 20s. Uh, and now as you go further to the west, the, the cold will be even more severe. Now, this is the period where we're really going to have to watch for, I think, the first storm um, for areas near the mid-Atlantic. So not next week, but the week following. And the reason I say that is what we have not had, guys, if I go to average this out here, this is 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. If you notice, we've had a lot of troughing or low pressure near the west, which bleeds cold air east. Now, however, if you're going to want to get a big storm in the east, you want to uh, put an area of high pressure to the west because that digs the trough, helps consolidate the energy more, especially if you have high pressure over Greenland. If you don't really have a ridge or a, or a rising jet stream in the west, you're going to have storms that come across, but it's going to give a higher likelihood of mixed precipitation or rain for the mid-Atlantic, and New England, New England can still get snow, especially this time of year. But watch this, guys. So as we get to, uh, say, uh, the 18th, so the 18th would be the end of next week, okay? Um, I come, I, excuse me, the 18th would be the end of the following week. Uh, you see that a ridge begins to pop up in the west coast. And if I average this out to five-day averages on this pattern, you could see the models are continuously showing this. Now, if I average out the runs from a few days ago, you could see a few days ago, the models didn't really want to show too much ridging. They had a hint of a ridge popping up. They had more lower heights uh, in northwestern United States. But the last couple of days, they have really reversed and have really trended to try to show a ridge popping up. And if this happens, guys, if we see a ridge pop up here with all this cold air, this is really going to bring down the hammer in colder than normal temperatures for the longer term along the East Coast. And also, the first storm likely to develop somewhere around mid-month. And that would be great to give us a nice white Christmas. So, a lot going on. Um, the big million dollar question is, is, are the models right? Is this going to be a warm December um, where the cold air is all locked up in the Northwest? Right now, I'm not, I'm not betting on that yet. I just want to point this out the other day. I think if you look at what I had for the winter forecast, especially for December. I think the idea is right now, don't look bad. Uh, more to come. Thanks for checking out.